Welcome to the Agile People FikaCast. We talk about how to navigate with agility in our organizations. Today we we were supposed to talk about how finance can en- enable an agile organization and Ingla, you uh, you said that yeah, I just met uh, uh, beyond budgeting, and uh, so you're a bit enlightened in this in the subject. So uh, maybe you have something fun to share, or something uh, thoughtful to share in this subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Martin and I we attended a morning seminar with uh, Richard Olson from Beyond Budgeting. And uh, Rickard is actually a very good uh, uh, presenter of the, the subject. Uh, and he also has a strong financial background. So it's really interesting to listen to him, I think. Uh, but um, what he kind of started with today is a little bit like, you know, in our trainings, we draw back to the um, why organizations are organized as uh, uh, according to Taylorism and that uh, the world had changed and that. And it's also the case within the finance world. So he told uh, about the story about uh, why uh, we started doing budgets and... and uh, It's really going back to UK and their history there, but but also the first book on budget, it was written by a guy called McKinsey. And I think we all know the McKinsey name today. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, But but he really uh, wrote this book uh, to get, uh, and he did that in 1923, which is 100 years ago. And um, at that time, you had uh, very many stable uh, uh, issues in, in, in um, uh, like stable currencies. Uh, you had uh, local production. You, you didn't have a global market. Uh, you had very long product cycles. Um, demand the and supply. Was low also. Yeah. And everything you produced, you kind of managed to sell. So it's really very di- different um, uh, circumstances, but we still have the budget today. And and then uh, we started to talk about the uh, limitation with uh, the annual budgets. Uh, and also interesting that in his book, McKinsey pointed at two things, uh, why you should consider what you are doing uh, with the budgets. Uh, and he said the need for consideration and the importance on limitations. And he kind of, in these two short sentences in the, in the, in the later part of the book, he kind of describes what's actually happening on the market today and why a budget doesn't really work. But we still continue doing it. Yeah, we're, we're using a tool that was developed for a situation that is no longer applicable today. Mm. So what's what is the comfort that the budget is giving us so we still continue with it? Tradition. Mm. Tradition. Mm. Potential mm. feeling of control. Mm. Yeah. I would like to emphasize feeling of control. Mm. 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 Uh, so what, what did uh, Rickard say? What should we do instead then? There was one interesting thing and I on he, he said, okay, we have agile or agile transformations and they are sort of uh, methods or tools or uh, approaches. Mm. But if you put them in operating system, a fi- financial operating system that is not suited for that type of behavior, 
it will fail, more or less. Mm -hmm. You need to adapt the operating system of the financial structures mm -hmm. in order for it to be enabled to succeed. Mm -hmm. Could be right. I my my first reflection is okay. I'm I'm not a financial focused person. I don't come from that space. Uh, so what how would I look at it from my point of view I would not look at it from as an operational system but a person from a financial sector of course they use their perspective as the operational system I think of it as people as being the operational system and then we put them into a system hmm. Uh, so it, it's a matter of perspective, I guess. But it was an interesting help for me to reflect on, okay, yeah. Isn't that something that will break or make, regardless of if it's an operational system or if it's something else? Mm. Yeah, isn't that one part of the problem? Because if you have been in a, in a large organization that is super budget-driven, uh, you feel more like a number than a person. Mm -hmm. And uh, when uh, adjustments according to budget needs to happen, it's it's more or less like they um, play a, a, a set of cards and remove some of the cards, more or less. Uh, that card is a seven. That's, that's nice to oh. take that somewhere else. So you lose a bit the, the people side of the system. Yeah, uh, and that's also connected to what you were talking about, that Ingela, the old operational system, then if you continue to use that uh, analogy, uh, the old operation system is tuned to efficiency, to make things efficient. To make sure that we have throughput and um, in an efficient way, follow processes and structures. But in a volatile environment where we are right now, that is not what we want. We want effect effectiveness. We want to do the right thing, not in the right way. Mm. Or follow the process, so to speak. Mm. And a budget sort of blocks us from from doing that, then you need uh, other types of approaches to handle financial systems. And he also presented a few ways to handle that and order them in a good way. That was interesting also to see. I'm looking forward. I would like to attend this the course that we have soon. Mm, I, will, too. Um, mm. I think I can learn a lot. Mm. Mm. I think the the key. I was speaking in the in the wrong microphone previously. So I said simultaneously, as you, Martin, that it's down to feeling that we are in control, and that's why it feels good to have a budget and so on. And isn't it the same way when it comes to to not keeping our eyes open to that we are in complexity. We think we can plan things in projects, and then we can have budgets for projects. So we build kind of control mechanisms for feeling even more secure even though we somewhere know and realize that we never really turns out as we think it does we end up in some kind of chaos with delays and task forces and so on so, so it's i think it's yeah, the, the 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 strength of it that it provides uh control and feeling of control but it's a false feeling right mm. You still, you need it to some extent. You need to have some sort of forecast. Mm. Uh, you need to understand how much money you have, mm. uh, but you need to be flexible. Uh, I guess agile. Mm. You move the money where they they are needed now, based on the situation at hand. So you need to be adaptive. And if you create budgets, you are not flexible anymore because you're sort of boxing mm. the money. Where there's where you think that they will be needed, and you're forecasting that for yeah, eighteen months before it actually is needed, maybe. Mm. Um, 
I can see that the the old system of having a budget it also uh, puts on a lot of control in order to function. And when I have tried to, uh, or when I have been coaching people to take away that control and give that control to the people to take bigger responsibility. Eh, that's a challenge also uh, sometimes it's hard to get the the people and the teams to take that responsibility and at the same time uh, having the behavior of the budget holder to behave in a different way and to coach people in order to be able to feel empowered to take that budget um, it's it's quite easy if you say oh, we are three developers and we we create this app and we get money from App Store. It's quite easy to take the whole responsibility of uh, how much money do we have? How much can we spend? Uh, what's the investment of this uh, feature we would like to build? But if it's a bigger system than that, it's it's tough to make teams aware and and also to dare to take that responsibility. I, it really depends how you do it. Because today, I know Bjarte Boksnes, he gives this example from, from a pharmaceutical company about uh, traveling. Uh, instead, they removed all the travel policies, uh, but they made it all, all transparent. So everyone could see how much you had spent. And uh, then it's kind of, uh, I don't know, in Swedish you would say self-justice. Um, what is the English word? Self-regulated. Yeah, self-regulated. Uh, where people act, uh, they take the responsibility, they act responsible. Uh, and and Rickard also gave some examples of that today, uh, from when you make people aware of costs and and and, and that people are uh, much more uh, responsible when they get the responsibility. I, it really depends how you do it. Mm -hmm. But what I hear sometimes in many organizations is that managers say that they give responsibility. Uh, but in practice, the systems doesn't go there. The, the system is not designed to, to, for them to, to take this responsibility. Mm -hmm. And it might be of historical and, and, and uh, cult, uh, company culture. And I think that is what, what you highlighted, Daniel, and what you built onto uh, Ingela is, is, is uh, one of the biggest transformational challenges, I think, to move away from a system that is quite controlled and maybe boring and um, not that fun to work in, mm. but it's quite convenient. So when moving away in, in, in such an old fashioned organization, you can feel that you, you can have lots of frustration on that system and you feel that you're not allowed to do things and so on. But then if you too quickly get that responsibility, then it's kind of difficult and it doesn't feel really good because how can, how, how can you trust on me to take that decision? So I think that just points at the, at the, the, um, that the journey that's needed. It, it is a transformation journey with all these things. We can't just move from day one to day two to different behaviors because the system doesn't allow it, the culture doesn't allow it, people are stuck in the old culture for instance and they need some guidance and some time to transform and trans transfer to the new way of working and it, it is more convenient the old system in some ways frustrating and limiting but kind of get used to it so so hmm. you need to understand and gradually be able to take the new kind of responsibility i think what do we do if people don't take the responsibility then you give them all this uh this uh, possibilities to, to take it, but they don't dare to. But you need to give them the foundation and enable them to be able to. You need to trust them to take it, but you, of course, need to make sure that it's possible for them to take it. Baby yeah. steps, small steps. And also, as I see it, you need to, to 
practice maybe a new type of leadership because they are used to punishment maybe so yeah. they don't dare so you need maybe to uh, in, implement the learning structure and talk about failures and these classic mm. things we have in uh, software development but it needs to be part of budget and money um, even though it it's it's a bit more hurt it hurts us more because it's uh, actual money that we maybe uh, have lost in a certain learning but on the long term it's a fantastic investment because it's a good learning but yeah so so that's a bit what i'm after we we, we also need to help them and uh, to show that you're not punished and you you can make mistakes even though it's uh, direct money that it is uh, it is about yeah and for for the leader as well to be vulnerable and saying that i have i have done mistakes as well in these from a financial perspective for instance so so i'm what what i don't have more information than you so so mm. i'm not it, it doesn't make sense that i take those decisions and i have been in the past maybe and i've uh, messed up so you should feel the trust for me that you can you won't get punished because you're likely to make an even as good decision as I did for instance mm. uh, I also think it's about training because you know if you're going to take financial decisions you also need to have background to be able to take them yeah, of course scale yeah. And skill set mm -hmm. is important, mm -hmm. of course. But mm -hmm. I was well, that was what I was meaning to being enabled. Mm -hmm. You need to have a, a develop a skill set, and you need to have some person to interact with in order to to take those steps uh, by yourself. It does not just happen. Ah, oh, here's your your budget or whatever you call it. Go and play. Uh, you need some sort of framing, of course. But when I talk, starting to when I'm talking here, I'm, I'm starting to think about the book *Humanocracy*, uh, which covers financial parts in in it in, in itself in, in in very different type of companies. And I'm thinking, especially at the at the end of that book, they are talking about Michelin. Is it called Michelin? Tire company creating tires. Mm -hmm. I'm remembering. I think I remember. I don't. It's for a long time ago since I read it, but I think it was in in that that they have an example of a transition from a very traditional type of company and and manufacturing structures and uh, ownership of of different things uh, on on a hierarchical. Can't pronounce that word. But um, and how they change the behavior, and also in in the financial area, if I don't recall incorrectly, which I thought felt was very interesting because they they are ex uh, explaining different challenges that happen through the way there because it's sort of a, a storytelling uh, chapter. Mm. I felt that that was very interesting. Because there will, of course, be backlashes when you interact and change. It's not that you can just, if it's an operating system, it's not <laughs> super easy to change an operating system. Mm. It's sort of the base. Mm. So where, where do we start then? In that book, uh, he also describes a, a corporation called Nucor, which is a steel company. Uh, and I think yeah, that is a very good example <laughs> to start with. Yeah, true. Uh, they true, have they true. kind of uh, grown uh, into a large corporation, but they have built, if, even if it's um, uh, even if it's an old company, it was founded in 1940. I see. <laughs> uh, it's it's still very untraditional to uh, if you compare to companies in that. Uh, from the same yeah the time very, very self uh, deciding uh, mm. sections or manufacturing plants mm. that are very and they are yeah it's a steel manufacturing company mm. 
and they have very different type of, of uh, salary approaches very it's more easily to com compute i guess uh, the feedback mm -hmm. mechanism for for producing and improving things but they are very open and free to how to uh, go into different type of uh, if i um, initiatives anyone can start to think of okay how can we improve this furnace thing that melts all the metal so that we can start to in a, in a better way so and people can go out on on um, business trips to other type of plants uh, and it was very much easier to actually act and do things which mm. makes them more uh, resilient i guess mm. to changes Mm -hmm. So um of the words that I was missing from Richard uh, Olsson's talk by the way resilience he did never talk about resilience So no, they used talked okay. about to start what is the first thing you should stop then budgets yeah, no, stop. I don't think you can just start <laughs> uh, stop doing fiscal things. budgets. Then okay, because yeah, but but uh, yeah, we don't I mean... need to have fiscal budgets. We can have budgets that stretch through the time when they are needed, of for, yeah, but they, to the horizon they... of where we can see. Could couldn't it be that we keep the budgets that we have, but we start to iterate? We start to follow up the budgets more frequently and start new types of uh, behaviors and uh, how we talk around the budget and maybe we can start some uh, how mm. to adjust uh, in a quarter or in a month or whatever it could be because we see new opportunities or new challenges or whatever it could be beyond budgeting uh, they talk about you need to because the budget really has three purposes uh, which is target setting forecasting and resource allocation and you need to separate the, them into three different processes mm -hmm. so the target setting is really what we would like to happen and you know we we have talked a lot about separating that uh, targets from from payroll and so on, uh, and then he covered that today also. Um, because I think uh, most companies are very much driven by sales, profit, and loss. So when it comes to resources like a new onboarding employees, uh, onboarded. They are not even willing to buy a new laptop, but they give a very, very old laptop that had been used for many years. So, uh, and and there is no willingness, even like the employee complains the laptop is not working properly. The battery is draining, but the answer that the person get is like, we are very stringent on the budget, so we don't have an allocation. Mm -hmm. So that's that's quite sad. <laughs> that's the fact. It's like because when we talk about finance, the company is surviving with projects. When they get a new tender, that's where the revenue is coming in. But if they like do not know how to manage it, then it's very difficult for the uh, employ employees in that company. So how an organization can change the mentality? Yeah, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. I can see that we are just touching the surface of this mm -hmm. uh, extremely big subject. I think we should dig yeah. into it especially since we have the new training uh, being launched in uh, Business Agility Foundation. So uh, I think we should uh, talk more about this subject, but the FICA for today is uh, over. So now it's time to go back to what we are doing uh, to fulfill our budgets at the moment where we <laughs> are working. So.
Thank you very much for today. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.